talk about the the great Joffrey. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, obviously, Joffrey, he was the... And, and, and for people who aren't familiar with Game of Thrones, we'll, Ben and I will try and describe these characters as much as possible. Um, if, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, I'm not sure why you're watching this tonight, but, but again, we'll, we'll try our best to, to kind of give you a little bit of a high level overview about uh, who these people were. So uh, yeah, Joffrey, he, he was one of the most despicable, uh, excuse me, despicable characters uh, in the Game of Thrones show. Maybe one of the most despicable characters in all of television. I, I don't know if there's history. really. Yeah, I, mean, it, it, I think I think for me, you know, growing up, just I can't think of a character I've ever hated more in a TV show and, want, and was happy when I finally saw them die. You know, I think that's what's really telling of Joffrey. When you're watching the show and you see the death scene, that was about as. I, happy as I'd been up until that point watching that show. So, <laughs> maybe that's a little telling of me more than it is of the show, but um, I, I do want to mention this too. I think the funniest part of Joffrey is he's such a conniving, you know, such a selfish, such a vicious kid, but the funniest thing to me is that the kid who plays him is like the nicest guy you'd ever meet ever. I've seen all the interviews he's done, and he said people like will run up to him and tell him, you know, F you, and like uh, yell obscenities at him, so... I thought that was really funny too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like the kid as well from Harry Potter, uh, Malfoy. I, Malfoy. I don't know if you. Yeah, like he was just an awful character, but I mean, pales in comparison to Joffrey. But again, nicest kid in real life. Oh yeah. Um, so so Ben, tell me, who in the 49ers universe is Joffrey? Well, and honestly, I think this will speak to 49ers fans. And 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 I'll, listen, I'll, just to give a little buddy. To give everyone at home a little behind the scenes, Chris kind of did disclose who he picked for this pick, but I think it's fairly obvious. It's It's got to be Jed York above anyone else. I describe him as the boy king, and right down here, I have written – there you go. Thank you, Chris. There, the, and I've written down, you know, to me, he's the illegitimate heir to the 49ers, just as Joffrey's the illegitimate heir to the Iron Throne. Um, I, as, as I was going through my research, you know, I'm a bit of a newer Niners fan, even though I'm very familiar with the NFL and everything. So I wasn't as familiar with the 2010 range, but when I was doing my research, this quote stuck out to me after the uh, Harbaugh fire in 2014. York has created a culture that encourages selfishness, weakness, and backstabbing. I think that describes Joffrey and Jed pretty perfectly. They seem like two peas in a pod in that sense. But I think the funny thing out of all of this to me with this comparison is he's strayed away from that recently. He's not quite that undermining, um, just conniving little twerp that dropped that, that he was a few <laughs> years ago, for being honest. I mean, I wasn't like I said, I wasn't a 49ers fan when they fired Har Harbaugh. But just in reading everything about it and remembering when that happened, I mean, he constantly undermines him that, oh, oh, oh. hey, you got to spell Joffrey right, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, not Jeffrey, Rio. Um, it's not Jeffrey, it's Joffrey. Get it right. Uh, and, and I think Buddy. the favorite thing I saw, <laughs> I think one of my favorite things, Chris, I got to mention this, is that Jed, when he fired Jim Harbaugh and he brought on Jim Tom Sula, the comparison he made was that he said it was like, when the Warriors fired Mark Jackson and hired Steve Kerr. Didn't quite turn out that way for Jed. Um, but like I said, I think the funniest thing out of all this comparison is in the last two, three years, he's become more and more uninvolved with the team. And I think it's really telling of who Jed is, quite frankly, that the team is doing better the less and less he's involved with them. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you nailed it. And, and it's hard to, to really get on his case, even though I, I do get on his case a lot on Twitter. Uh, the majority of my articles on SI have been about Jed York and his tweets and all that. But uh, yeah, it, it's maybe a little bit unfair to, to compare him this closely to Joffrey. But I, I did a little research myself on Jed and I didn't know this about him. So this is from his, this is actually from his Wikipedia page. Oh. So Jed, he actually began work as a financial analyst for Guggenheim Partners at their New York City offices, but left after approximately one year. So, so after he graduated college, he got a bachelor's. He, he worked for one year. And after he quit his job, uh, the, York, the Yorks brought him in to the 49ers and gave him the title. I don't know what this means, but they gave him the title of director of strategic planning and then later promoted him to, to vice president of strategic planning. So 
Yeah. <laughs> For anyone who's been through the workforce, getting that level of responsibility, that promotion right off the bat, I mean, that, that just doesn't happen. Chris, and Chris, I'm about to be a senior in college. That irks me to my core. Yeah, yeah, Ben. You put in put in about at least one decade, maybe two decades of just hard labor, uh, little to no promotion or upward movement, and and that's that's sort of the reality that most of us face. Uh, this this is definitely outside the norm here, um, and it, yeah, it's just funny because it's it's again it's very much the path that Joffrey took. He didn't do anything. He's a young guy. His dad was the king, and his dad. Uh, in the in the show and in the book, passed away. So power just went straight to Joffrey, just as it kind of just went to Jed. Uh, Jed's parents they didn't want anything to do with the 49ers for the most part. They didn't want to be the face. So so they're just like, here you go, Jed. You you can run the franchise, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah. So and, and then I have a couple other things here. Uh, so so I got this from again the Wikipedia. And I'll just read it straight. In December 2008, Jed became president of the 49ers with his parents transitioning to the post of co-chairman. In making the, uh, the announcement, his father, Jed, said that Jed's previous post served as an opportunity for him to learn how to run a major league franchise while Jed, uh, excuse me, let me read that again. So his father said that his one year uh, and, and his, his role as director of strategic planning set him up to become the leader of a major, major franchise. Um, while Jed is the operating head of the 49ers, his parents remain principal owners and are responsible for providing resources and representing the, the 49ers at league meetings. Um, and then last thing on this, and then we'll move on to, to our next character. I don't know if you remember this or you followed the 49ers this far back, but in October 2010, the 49ers, they had started off 0-5 that season. And Jed York, he wrote to Adam Schefter that the 49ers would win their division and make the playoffs. Uh, I remember why would you, why would you do that? I remember reading about that, Chris, and doing my research. And I like, I, I, I yelled obscenities out loud because I was like, who in their right mind would actually do that? Like, Oh my <laughs> God. I, I, and, uh, and then I like this part. Uh, this proclamation by Jed led ESPN columnist David Fleming to refer to York as kooky and goofy. And to note that York backs up such bold declarations with a long list of qualifications, starting with A, his lifelong love of the 49ers, B, his prestigious high school baseball career, and, third, and C, the fact that his godfather is Eddie DeBarbo. Yeah, those were his qualifications, according to, to Dave Fleming. So pretty qualified, uh, you know, yeah. I, I mean, talk <laughs> about experience, you know, just I know just me, if, you know, looking at it this way, I've been a Niners fan since 2017. So this time next year, I should be running the team. Right, Chris? I, I think that tracks. Yeah, I, I think you're 